Hello, have you ever wanted to make your audio sound like it's coming from an old-timey speaker? Well then, boy, do I have the plug-in for you. Okay, so this is a new speaker by Audio Thing. It's based on some of their older plugins. And basically the idea is it's emulating the effects of some older equipment, microphones and speakers, as well as introducing some distortion, compression, filtering, noise, basically just to make your audio sound like it's coming from any kind of crappy low quality speaker or microphone, whether that be a telephone, a PA speaker, uh, whatever. It's just basically an easy way to make your audio fit into a world more if that audio is coming from a crappy speaker. So this plugin is based on some of their older plugins, um, megaphone, speaker, um, they also had a convolution plugin. Just this whole plugin is based on convolution, which if you want to know more, uh, I have a video on that that you can go watch. I'll put in the cards, but this is using convolution to simulate low quality audio equipment, essentially. Also those older plugins uh, like Megaphone and the older version of Speaker, if you own those plugins, they're actually giving a discount on this plugin. So it's worth grabbing also, um, even if you don't own any of those plugins, it's on sale. Uh, normally it's $100, but they're having an introductory sale for $50. So if you're interested in this, it's worth picking up. Not, I mean, necessarily right the second, but before it's no longer on sale, you know. Okay, so let's dive in here and look at what this plugin actually does. So it's got a series of stages you can hear, see, and uh, right now the whole plugin is disabled, but I'll enable it in a second. It's got all these stages and a variety of controls in each of these stages. So let's go through and look at what each of them do. So before we enable, I'm actually gonna disable all of these. We're just gonna start with microphone. All right, here comes the plugin. All right, so as you can probably hear, this is already doing something to my voice. So first off, we have this microphone um, utility. So this is gives us a variety of options. Um, and I'll scroll through quickly some of the options. There's different condenser mics, low quality mics, of course, um, radio mic, different dynamic mics. Um, I'll keep going just to kind of give you an example of what some of these sound like. There's miscellaneous, which uh, gives you piezo mics. So these are contact mics. They're used in um, like guitar or bass pickups occasionally, acoustic guitar and bass. Um, so if you want to emulate the sound of some of those, there's that option. Uh, we also have an inductor mic, which is similar, and sub kick, which is a mic that's used for. Uh, kicks. It's kind of usually used as a secondary mic to capture super low frequencies, so my voice is probably super bassy. Here, I'll get close. Here. Yeah, like that. Okay. And of course, we also have a variety of phones from modern earbuds, different types of smartphones, to older telephones. And again, these are using impulse response or convolution, which means each of these are modeled after actual hardware and the frequency response and behavior of actual hardware. Um, they also have these ribbons, which are mostly modeled after different vintage ribbons. So these are the types of mics that would be used back in like the 1950s and 60s uh, for singers and for uh, radio and television and that sort of thing. So also cool that they have those. Now, they have all these features down here as well. Um, I'm actually going to come back to them. You see they have the same settings over here on the speakers thing. So we'll come back to it when we talk about the speakers. But first, um, let's disable that. And we also have distortion. So I'm going to enable that. That got loud. Bring down the gain. So this gives us a variety of distortion methods since the sound of different equipment usually isn't just the frequency response. It, there's also distortion. So there's a variety of analog distortion methods. So I'll go to this. Um, so for example, these are all analog. These are all digital. So carbon mic is a type of really low quality microphone. Uh, that's typically used, uh, it was used in phones a lot several decades ago, um, so it's emulating the distortion you get from that. Classic is just standard distortion. Diode clipper, um, diode clippers are a type of distortion. It's used to emulate valves or tube distortion typically. Um, they're used a lot in guitar distortion pedals. Foldover is something you get in certain types of amplifiers, so really low quality amplifiers can have foldover distortion. Soft drive, just generic stuff. Tape uh, comes from, of course, analog tape and valve, valve or tube distortion that you would get from that. So equipment that uses that. Uh, so this is emulating 
uh, very low bit rate uh, stuff. Clicks is just adding clicks from t interference. Uh, drops, oh, come on, I'm clicking on it. Drops is just the audio is dropping out due to low quality connection. GSM is the type of distortion you get from European phones. Interference is just digital interference from transmission. Quantization, I'll up that, is just a kind of a form of compression that's used in some equipment. Robotization. Uh, robotization is exactly what it sounds like. I'm not sure you can hear me when it's on. And then the telecom models uh, older American style telecom distortion. So you get all those sorts of distortion depending on what the audio quality is, um, what you're trying to emulate source-wise, you have these different options for degradation, distortion, whatever. A compressor is a basic compressor. It's exactly what it sounds like. Um, compression is used in a lot of equipment to make the transmission higher quality to make it easier to understand people when there's a lot of background noise and interference. So it's just emulating that kind of effect. The filter is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a basic EQ filter, and they have a variety of types here. So there's a low pass with two different um, levels of steepness of the filter. A high pass, same thing, but on our low end. Band pass. Uh, band pass covers everything, and then our notch here is just notching out particular frequencies, so you can kind of hear what's going on there. All right, and then our last thing before we get over to our speakers is our background noise. So this just gives us a variety of noise that we can add and filter. So there's some static. Um, there's just some generic. Oh, come on. Taking a second to load. Uh, just some generic background noise that you can use. You can also, um, if you go into their noise holder, you can add your own loops. Um, so if you have a loop background noise that you want to use in the plugin, you can add your own. I also want to show you um, if we add some static. There's also this envelope setting. So if I go to the positive envelope, what that means is the sound will only come through as my voice is coming through. So you can hear when I'm quiet, there's no sound, but as I get, as I talk louder, it comes in. Um, and then there's the opposite where when I talk, the sound goes away. So if you have this negative envelope here like I have now, that's kind of emulating a compressor and how a compressor affects background noise. And then if you have this, um, this the positive envelope emulates how a gate controls sound. So it's basically just different ways of uh, the equipment interacting with background sound that might be present in a signal chain. All right, so we'll turn that off and we'll come over here to our intercom, uh, or our speaker emulation, sorry. Um, so this, I think, is the most interesting and useful part of this. So there's a ton of different speaker emulations. So we have this, which is uh, different emulations of guitar cabinets. Not necessarily the most useful thing sound design-wise, but you have that option. There's different devices, so uh, intercoms, PA, a megaphone. Again, this is what I talked about, like where this is an extension, basically, of Audio Things old megaphone plugin. There's also different phones, so emulate the sound of different smartphones or old telephones. There's a model of different types of speakers, so you have older speakers, modern Bluetooth style speakers, and then just kind of generic speaker sounds. Uh, so there's all of those, and then uh, there's toys uh, if you want to emulate the sound of a really tiny, crappy toy speaker. You also have that option. But I'm going to come back here to our uh, PA horn, and I'm going to turn up the gain a bit. You can see I can up the output just so we still have good signal level. Um, so there's a variety of options here So to alter the sound. So there's pitch, uh, which it does exactly what it sounds like, uh, so we can reset that. And there's also this echo and feedback, which is a basic delay to emulate if we had multiple PA horns. So this is just introducing a small delay in the sound. And then if I add feedback, um, this is feeding back that delay back in. So if I up this, it kind of gives the sound that 
there is, I'm actually going to bring this down and bring up the feedback, it kind of gives the sound that there's multiple different PA loudspeakers. Sort of up this, up this, up this. That's too much. Sounds, sounds weird. weird. So, so I, I could give, give you the sound, sound that this is, I'm going to down that a little, little bit. It, it sounds, sounds like there's, there's a, a bunch, bunch of PA horns scattered all around. Okay, so I have to turn it off. I can't talk <laughs> when that's when the feedback is there. It sounds really weird to hear myself delay, uh, but it's emulating like if you had multiple P or PA horns scattered around a big environment, uh, like in a airport or something like that. If you wanted to create the sound of multiple PA speakers all kind of overlapping and that echoey sound that you get from that, there's also a balance uh, which is basically just a pan control. Mix controls how much of the signal is actually coming through, so if you wanted some of the dry signal, like for example if you had a shot with someone talking into a PA system, you would hear some of them talking, but also some of the sound back through the PA, so you could mix in some of the PA sound with some of the dry sound, and then the output, which I was adjusting earlier, is just basic gain control. And then we also have the option to invert the phase in case you have phase issues for whatever reason, you just want to flip that phase button. That's there. Another cool thing you can do is there's an EQ so we can adjust the sound if, you know, one of the uh, different models gets us close but not quite to what we want. We can adjust the EQ to get us closer to what we're looking for. And then, again, all these settings are also on our microphone input. All right, I'm going to go to something a little more natural. Let's go to a cube speaker. Okay, so another cool thing we have is we have our routing here. It allows us to control where all the sounds are in the signal chain. So, for example, if we wanted to add the noise before the mic, we have that option. Uh, we can reorder things however we want. And we can also change the input. So maybe we want noise and we want to compress the noise for whatever reason. So this noise will go into our compressor and then our mic and our input, so my voice talking, won't be affected by the noise or the compressor levels. So it's just a way to uh, give you more options for the routing and signal flow, which is really cool. And then we can also uh, control click here to change bypass and what we're changing effectively with the uh, different filters, whether they're active or not. Now there's also some different uh, Preset here you can see, so there we have a really crappy microphone or a sound of a karaoke machine um, or some lo-fi if you want some lo-fi sound, if that's your goal to use this. Uh, or some interesting sound design uh, options as well, so... Whatever you want to do, you have those options. I haven't actually tried that one before. Interesting. I like it. Alright, let's go back to the bathroom. Now we have a really muddy bathroom sound. But anyway, the point is just, you have all these options to recreate the sound of uh, different speakers, and you have a ton of options to tweak the flexibility of all of these different tools. So it's a really powerful, really neat tool, um, and it's worth picking up. Again, basically any time if you're doing any kind of sound design and you're emulating or you want your audio to have the illusion of coming through certain equipment or whatever, this is a great plugin. It's got basically everything packed in, and so I think it's really cool and worth picking up if you do a lot of sound design. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you like this video, hit the like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below. And as always, if you want to see more videos like this one, please hit that subscribe button.